Welcome to the Build Your Base podcast, helping you build your strongest Bangkok life. I'm very happy today to welcome friend of base, Priya Karana, to the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us, Priya. Thanks for having me, Jack. We had a great webinar recently. We had lots of people tuning in. They were very keen to learn more about how to eat mm-hmm. well in Bangkok, how to mm-hmm. be eating at this time during COVID-19. So we were very keen to get you onto the Build Your Base podcast. Today, we want to talk about eating in Bangkok. Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, just, just give us a little background on yourself and what you currently do in Bangkok. Sure. So I have a doctorate in nutrition education from New York City. I went to Columbia University and basically what I do here is I own my own consulting business. So I consult for firms, gyms, hotels, you know, and a, and a whole range of private clients that basically want to improve their lifestyle. So my approach is, you know, enhancing day-to-day life, quality of life through through real food. And, you know, it is it's an absolute pleasure to be here because I have a lot of base clients that work work under me and they they get great results in conjunction with the great work that you do. So let's start off with just eating in Bangkok. Is it difficult, do you think, to eat healthy, nutritious food in Bangkok? Um, I actually think it's improved over the last, you know, several years. It's It's not that difficult anymore to get healthier options. You know, it is important for me to mention that even though Thai food seems to be considered as healthy, on the outside, you know, it is important to make sure that we look at the ingredients. Thai food, most Thai food that you get takeaway or, or at restaurants is, you know, laden with MSGs, is laden with coconut milk, sugar, etc. But, you know, now they are offering, you know, alternatives to those options. You can get rice berry and brown rice as opposed to white rice. The portion sizing um, in Bangkok is appropriate, I would say, compared to, to the Western diet. Um, and there are a lot more options at the grocery store and with takeaway options, restaurant options with eating healthier, I would say. Um, so no, it's not necessarily that difficult anymore. It's just being smart. It's just being smart with, with what you do choose and, and, and where. Would you say the Thai diet is inherently healthy or unhealthy? It can be healthy. Like I said earlier, portion sizing is, is appropriate. Um, it's again the ingredients that are in the Thai in in Thai cuisine. Um, so it is about choosing healthier options. Um, when I go out, usually I'll I'll have them make me a stir fry with several veggies. Um, I always ask for less oil. Um, you know, who knows? It's actually done. But you know, these are these are some ways. These are some tips that I do find myself being catered to when I do go out. I've lived over in the U.S. for 14 years, um, and I am Thai uh, by birth. So I would still say Thai food is definitely healthier than eating in the West. But unfortunately, the trends are changing and we are eating much more like they do over in the West. So it's difficult to answer that question. Thai food itself can be considered healthy. It's just, you know, again, the ingredients that that are in what you order. And the so what would be the considerations eat. and how might you know whether it's healthy or not? Let's say just a typical Thai dish, Pakra Pao Gai, like how would yeah. we, what would we mm-hmm. need to look out for to know whether that was going to be from a place that would make it healthy or not healthy? Or not. So the first thing that I would say is the MSGs that are added to it, I can guarantee you 98% of restaurants here add MSG for flavor enhancement. Um, the studies are still inconclusive with if MSGs are bad for you. But as a general rule of thumb, if you can't pronounce the ingredient and you don't really know what it is, how can it be good for you is, is really what I go by. The other thing that I would look at is the sodium, the salt, and of course, sugar. There's sugar in absolutely every Thai dish, which is what makes Thai, Thai food delectable. Um, but again, it's, it's, you know, it's how much they put in it. Coconut milk is another one. I guess kapao kai doesn't really have you know, coconut milk, but it is, it's filled with sugar, it's filled with sodium, it's filled with MSG. If you, you do get it from outside, if you choose to make it at home, um, the chicken itself can be approved upon. I, I order all of my chicken breast from Paleo Rabi. Um, and I know that it's the better, the smarter choice than getting the regular, you know, chicken you get at the grocery store, which is guaranteed what they use when you eat out. And another way to, I guess, make kapao kai healthy is to add other veggies in with it. I add onions, I add peppers in with my kapow and, and, you know, force my family to eat three or four servings of veggies in that meal itself. 
and then I serve it alongside a whole grain. So definitely not white rice. It will be a rice berry. It will be brown rice. It can even be barley, quinoa. So there are ways to go about making it even healthier. Okay, some good tips there. And there's a couple of things I'd like to unpack. So mm -hmm. you mentioned the, the quality of the meat. You get good quality yeah. meat from Paleo Robbie. It's likely, say, if it's street food, that wouldn't be high quality meat. What's the difference between good quality and high quality? And how does that impact the nutritional value of the meats? At Paleo, I guess they order or they get delivered cage-free chicken and eggs, poultry. Um, what that means is that they're, they're allowed to roam free and they're given a higher quality feed, which in turn impacts their health and then ultimately what we are eating. Um, the science, unfortunately, isn't conclusive as yet as to if that provides extra nutrients. But just, you know, if you can afford to and if you do have a little bit more knowledge on eating an animal that's been shocked and then killed, releasing toxins into, into its meat and then consuming it, you know, it can't be good for you. So that's essentially... It would make sense that the feed of the animal would affect the quality of the meat, you would think, absolutely. right? I'm not a nutritionist, but that would seem to make sense to me. Absolutely, it would. Um, but there's still no real science to suggest that, you know, in turn, that's adding nutrients. So it would impact the quality of the meat, but we're still waiting to see if that is actually adding nutrients. Interesting. And it is interesting how science does struggle to come to really decisive, 100% yeah. mm -hmm. conclusive facts about mm -hmm. nutrition. It does, mm -hmm. I think, lead to some it of the confusion. It takes time. The other thing you mentioned was oils. So again, what's mm -hmm. a good oil? What's a bad oil? What would be the negative impacts and consequence of eating your Thai food cooked in some of these palm poor oil. oils? Okay. So bad oils are vegetable oils, palm oil, canola oil, sunflower oil. The good oils I would suggest are the first one being ghee or clarified butter, just because it's in its purest form. Um, avocado oil in moderation. So again, all of, the, all of this is in moderation. So when I say good oil versus bad oil, that doesn't mean you lay them your food with, with oils. It means moderation, but they're heart healthy oils. So ghee, avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil are the better options. The, the bad oils are the vegetable oils the processed oil, refined oils. And what's the negative consequences of consuming too much that of it, So they're all high in saturated fat, bad fat, whereas the, the good oils are high in good fat, monounsaturated fat, which are actually showing to improve cholesterol levels, several other heart health benefits. Mm. The thing I like about that is I consider that quite an easy win. So it doesn't mm -hmm. really affect the, the taste of the food. No. It's an easy switch to make and it's not really going to make much difference, right? You know, cutting out beer or cutting out pizza might be difficult for you but switching oils I, I consider quite an easy win and it's something mm -hmm. that we do talk to our clients about okay so mm -hmm. let's talk about Bangkok specifically mm -hmm. where can we get good quality food you mentioned paleo Robbie yeah throw us a few restaurants supermarkets anywhere we, okay. where we should be shopping okay so one you know I, I'm gonna name a few restaurants v, Vistro BKK is one that I have recently been uh, loving um, they do have vegan options and all of the ingredients are, are, you know, spelt for you. So you know exactly what's going into your meals. Um, I know a lot of people that, that work out, you know, diligently enjoy ordering their clean meals. So I have a list here of clean meal options that I can, that I can offer. Um, Fit Meal Foods is one. Vegan Crush is one. Tip Top Clean Food is one. There's a place called Brunch Bowl that I, that I order from uh, several times you get. Uh, you know, a whole range of good quality meals that are appropriately portioned. Again, clean, you know, the ingredients that are in them, they're, they're very, they're very lowly processed. Vegan Crush is another one. Uh, a lot of people ask me about desserts and where they can get healthier desserts. So I have several here that I can recommend. One is Sentimental Baking. One is Cacao and Love, and I follow them on Instagram. And it's, you know, they create the most delectable desserts with loads and loads of fruits and veggies. So um, I order from them quite a bit. Bake the Sprout is where I get my bread from. You know, they have limited, they have limited product and they have limited choices, but the choices that they do have are, again, are, are whole grain. So what I mean by whole grain, when I choose my breads, whole grains are less processed and less refined than say white rice um, is, and that's where you get the fiber. So a lot of the a lot of the restaurants and the bakeries 
um, that I'm suggesting here offer the product in its entirety. So you're getting the whole food, you're getting the roughage and the fiber from the ingredients, which ultimately essentially adds to the nutritional level of, of what you order. If we shop at Tops and Villa mm-hmm. and all the regular mm-hmm. supermarkets, Foodland and the like, is mm-hmm. it easy to find nutritious, healthy food there? It is. It's absolutely easy. Um, they do offer organic ranges now. You know, extremely they're extremely widely available. Um, again, unfortunately, with the science, organic does not mean better. I usually choose to order local and sustainable, which in, you know itself helps small farm farmers and small businesses here in Thailand. But absolutely, all the all the grocery stores here offer healthier alternatives, and there's a wide variety of fruit and vegetable produce that you can get for for affordable so go for it paleo is a little bit more expensive for what they offer but again these are these are import goods that are from you know sustainable healthier options so you know if you can afford to then paleo rabi is is my go-to for my family for for dairy for poultry for meat for fish yeah i'm a big fan of paleo rabi as Mm -hmm. well any other delivery services like grocery delivery services that you can think Um, of or is paleo the number one I would say paleo is the number one. There are other organic companies. There's a few of them that come packaged. So you can order uh, weekly deliveries and they will, you know, come boxed and and at your door. Um, There's a few of them out there. What we will do is leave a list of those in the notes of the episode and we'll do a blog post on it so everybody can refer back to that. But lots of great options there, Priya. So thank you Mm -hmm. very much. In Bangkok, is there anything that you see people doing that you they really shouldn't be you know is there any Um, sort of common misconceptions about things that are healthy that might not be you mentioned one which is a lot of sugar i was shocked the first time i saw my iced lemon tea being made it was like seven massive mm -hmm. heaped teaspoons of Mm -hmm. sugar in there it was quite that's exactly quite disappointing (laughs) that's exactly what i was going to touch upon the drinks um you know you walk around you know prior to the pandemic you see it at, at the lunch break, 90% of the population outside is carrying a bag or, or a drink in hand. And that drink is usually an iced tea, an iced coffee, an iced chocolate. Portion size might be, might be appropriate, um, but it's, it's exactly what you just said. So, you know, one iced tea has about 10 to 12 spoons of condensed milk or sugar in it, which is delicious, half your, delicious refreshing and half your day's worth of calories. So the one thing that I, I do find when we could order with these, you know, dessert drink spots is that you can actually ask for less sugar. So they'll give you 50% less, 75% less. A lot of a lot of these places in Bangkok, dessert places, drink places are offering that. So I would definitely suggest, you know, if you don't want to miss out on your monthly iced bubble tea, go for it, but have 50% less sugar in it. It mm. tastes as good. Right. And it's just, again, shifting mindset to allowing yourself that treat, but having it be a little more appropriate, I would say. I think as well, it's important just to understand what you're consuming. The thing with me mm-hmm. is I thought it was absolutely fine. Ice lemon tea, didn't really see anything wrong with that. It was a little bit sweet, but I didn't really think too much of it. So I think it's just good to understand mm-hmm. where your calories are coming from, because if you're not losing weight, it could be that one be. iced tea that you have with 500 calories worth of sugar, and that could be mm-hmm. pushing you over your limit. So I think the most important thing is to really understand what you're eating and what you're consuming. And I think that's where a lot of people do struggle. Any other tips for healthy Bangkok eating that we've missed? Um, so I was just going to say with, with ordering healthier options, especially with desserts, that doesn't mean that you go crazy and you have the entire box of brownies from, you know, bake the sprout. Um, I would always suggest portion control. Again, calories are calories and it's all about what you take in versus what you take out. So Uh, Even though you are getting smarter, healthier options, again, portion control, in my opinion, is always key. Enjoy what you want to enjoy, but everything in moderation. The age old saying that every nutritionist needs to have ingrained, I should, you know, have that plastered in my office, everything in moderation. Tattooed somewhere, even on my (laughs) back. But, but But essentially, that is the key, you know, go for it. But again, portion control. Absolutely. I think that's the, the part that people do struggle with. Yeah. Finally, Priya, that takes us on nicely to your favorite Bangkok cheap meal. So during that 10, 20% where we can kind of let loose a little bit more and eat whatever we want, what would be your number one choice in Bangkok? I love Gigi. So I love pasta. 
I love homemade fresh pasta and Gigi just delivers every time. I have recently been been obsessed with Aesop, which is a Greek restaurant. Oh, yes. So yeah, even though mm -hmm, so even though it appears as a treat meal, I select wisely and my family is getting the hummus, the the tabbouleh, the quinoa salads, the meat. So it, it appears as a treat meal, absolutely, you know, laden with flavor and, and fat. But again, it's once in 10 days, why not? So Gigi and Aesop are my two favorite at the moment. Nice. And with Aesop, you get to smash some plates as well, which is absolutely. a lot of fun. Unfortunately, of not when you not when you have a takeout. I can't do that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, not socially acceptable to do it at home. <laughs> Priya, where is the best place to connect with you to find out more about what you do? Mm -hmm. So I do have a website. Um, I can put that on the notes as well. It's lifestylenutrition.coach. And if you want to reach out to me, head over to the contact page. All my details are on there. My Instagram, my LinkedIn, my Facebook page, all linked to the website. Uh, so send me a message and you'll have access to whatever tips and key advice that you need during this time. Awesome. Appreciate that, Priya. We will leave all of the details to contact you in the notes of the episode. Thank you very much for telling us a little bit more about how to eat healthy in Bangkok and looking forward to our next podcast episode together. Thanks, Jack. See you soon.